Hello and welcome to another Land Bible Study. My name is Jim. My name is James, your host and Bible reader for Land Bible Study. And so, thank you once again for joining another Land Bible Study. I hope and pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom through His Holy Word. Now, during the last uh, Bible study, um, I was able to provide uh, taboo, provocative subjects where, okay, <laughs> where. Um, uh, where things can get heated, where things, where passions can flare, when, where um, thought processes um, and and prior uh, convictions can come in, and how you can talk with each other. And I always believe that, especially when you're in a group of believers, uh, people uh, um, of faith, or if they're interested, always um, be welcoming to. Um, opinions uh, be welcoming to people what people what information other people have and um, and also continue to walk in the spirit uh, continue to bring the Lord into it continue in prayer continue in reading the scripture because uh, sometimes when you do talk about things heated topics um, especially as of today um, where it comes with uh, uh, what was the the previous? Uh, I think abortion was on the last one. Um, you can, uh, when it comes to other t uh, miscellaneous topics throughout communities and throughout um, throughout neighborhoods and such, you can still talk about those and ha and create an environment, create a space that is holy um, and focused on the Lord and focused on trying to. Um, uh, tr trying to be to uh, to uh, work together as a all as everybody does in the family of Christ, right? And so that's what um, even apostles, even people who were around Jesus, th they would get upset at each other, and they would have arguments. They would take a moment. Some you know some would need to take a moment. Some would go into scriptures, you know, or, or talk talk to Jesus or once Jesus uh, had went up to heaven they would pray about it they would request knowledge from Jesus from the Holy Spirit and <clears throat> it, it and they would receive it um, because of faith because of faith how strong the faith our faith can be and so you, realizing that understanding that we too can utilize that we too can talk about things and and um, and, and come together um, through the Holy Word, because the Holy Word is about love. It's uh, the the book, the Bible is about love. And so currently we're reading in 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel will be starting in chapter 16 today. I'm currently reading from NIV Collegiate Bible. And where uh, let's so let's get started because there's a lot, a lot of uh, information, a lot of stuff to go over today, a lot of information. And so let's get started today. David and Ziba. When David had gone a short distance beyond the summit, there was Ziba, the steward of Mephibosheth, waiting to meet him. He had a string, a string of donkeys saddled and loaded with 200 loaves of bread, 100 cakes of raisins, 100 cakes of figs, and a skin of wine. The king asked Ziba, why have you brought these? Ziba answered, the donkeys are for the king's household to ride on. The bread and fruit are for the men to eat, and the wine is to refresh those who become exhausted in the desert. The king then asked, where is your master's grandson? Ziba said to him, he is staying in Jerusalem because he thinks, today the house of Israel will give me back my grandfather's kingdom. Then the king said to Ziba, all that belonged to Mephibosheth is now yours. I humbly bow, Ziba said. May I find favor in your eyes, my lord, the king. And so where we are at is that <clears throat> David has left um, the city of David, basically Jerusalem, because his, one of his sons, um, Absalom, has decided to absorb throne <laughs> you know take over um because uh he was highly favored of the people because he really flattered them and he was ready to take control he 
you know, remember David had a lot of wives and concubines, so he had all these children and, and Absalom was one of them that wanted to rule. He was more focused on wanting the kingship um, and not so much necessarily being anointed and going through the whole process of, you know, um, seeking what God's will is, right? And so at this point, uh, Absalom has uh, pretty much got to people together, including those in the, um, in the royal court on his side to side with him and to the point where Absalom would even possibly kill his own father, David. And so David is not, he, he, he's not wanting that type of confrontation. Um, and so he left, he leaves Jerusalem and he is also um, really um, leaving it in the Lord's hand because, hands because he knows that <clears throat> um, the Lord would be there. If he was to lead, continue to lead Israel, then he knows that the Lord will um, will be there for him, and in you know in some ways I think <clears throat> because David's done a lot, and when we get to Psalm, like I said before in a previous Bible study, we'll see just how how much he knows or how, uh, uh, to glor knows to glorify the Lord, how much he loves the Lord, and. And so we'll get to see that as well. But he also is human. He also has shortages and those are having all these wives, having all these sons, doing things. He, he's done something that he shouldn't have done by having, by committing a, um, a murder, having um, Bathsheba's uh, husband uh, murdered. And so um, now he's got all these children um, and consequences can play out consequences can happen and so um always if you see something off or i say something off always correct me if i'm wrong <laughs> but that's i if i'm not mistaken that's uh what's going on and so leave them in the comments etc um and so right now uh ziba who is um the steward of mephibosheth is um, now coming out to David or uh, bringing stuff to David um, and I believe at this time David may feel that um, Mephibosheth um, because Mephibosheth was um, Jonathan's son that he uh, Absalom wouldn't be kind to him so he's giving he's making sure that people who are associated with Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth um, are taken care of. Um, be, um, bringing past to present, he's understanding that he, he, there's, I believe he's understanding that there's consequences to his actions, and he's also still loving his children, you know? And so bringing past to present, do we have conflicts in families? And oh, this is going to be one of those Bible studies, what's going to, this is going to come up over and over again about conflicts, especially within families. Now, which is a good topic because you could have opinions on certain taboo topics and certain hot topics, and it could cause a problem within your family. And someone, someone uh, said something very, very good, and that is, um, don't be drawn into judgment when other people are judging don't try to don't be drawn into it because you could end up starting to judge them and what that is saying is and how i see it and how it was worded to me um was basically don't set yourself up to be prideful and prejudiced to people and their opinions and such um because and try not and and focus on the lord Focus on the love and what the Lord has to say. And, and when it comes to uh, conflicts or when it comes to arguments, especially in conversations, leave it to the Lord. Pray, pray for yourself, wisdom. Pray for that other person or those other people for wisdom um, because 
the Lord can wipe the scales from someone's eyes. The Lord can give you something, give me something to make, uh, to give us more understanding of uh, topics of certain situations and things of life. And so, um, when we look at this story though, today, especially what we're reading about today is a conflicts in family that can be family, uh, you know, blood relatives, it could be extended family, it could be your Christian family, your, your followers of the Lord, the way, it could be the family in the community, the family of, uh, of the city, town, state, whatever, wherever you're at, country, um, that things could happen and where we can focus, we can refocus on the Lord when these things happen. And it's, it's almost like, um, it's similar to being tested too. You know, things happen. What are you going to do about it? Who are you going to go, who are you going to talk to? And, um, who, who are you going to open? And so with that, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Shimmy curses David, or Shimmy curses David. If you know the correct pronunciations of these, always um, read them together with us, and you can say them correctly. Um, um, but if you know how to type them out, type them in the comments section, uh, and I always thank you. Um, as King David approached um, Baharim, Baharim, a man from the same clan as Saul's family came out from there. His name was Shemai, son of Gera, and he cursed as he came out. He pelted David with all the king's official he pelted David and all the king's officials with stones, though all the troops of the special guard were on David's right and left. As he cursed, Shemai said, Get out, get out, you man of blood, you scoundrel. Ooh, he's really giving it to him. The Lord has repaid you for all the blood you shed in the household of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. The Lord has handed the kingdom over to your son Absalom. You have come to ruin because you are a man of blood. Then Abishai, so this is a person in Saul's household because remember Saul was anointed king and he would get jealous of David. And so, you know, he was a parent. I'm going to bring this up. Parents, what you do, what we do can rub, can, is viewed by children and can rub off or can be learned. And so in this case, um, this is a person, family of Saul and wanted to, in their mind, and, and how they felt Saul was justified for all of his actions, including wanting to kill David. And now David is dealing with consequence of that. And so let's continue to read. Then Abishai, son of Zerai, uh, said to the king, why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Let me go over and cut off his head. But the king said, what do you and I have in common? You have sons of Zerai. If I, if he is cursing because the Lord said to him, curse David, who can ask, why do you do this? I want to read this to us again, <laughs> because I feel like, including myself, that we don't like criticism. And that includes in families and such. We don't like it if, who, from whoever. Uh, brother, sister, child, your child, your your parent, etc. It goes both both up and down and sideways. Um, cr critiques, uh, bad things being spoken to us. We think that all bad things sometimes are just from the devil or just wrong and such. And I'm not talking about. I'm not talking. I'm talking about criticism. I'm not talking about other things right now. I'm just talking about criticism of, and someone saying what actually has happened, whether they understand, like, for instance, this person didn't understand Saul was jealous, you know, so they, in their eyes, Saul was justified because he was anointed. He, um, was the ruler 
of Israel before David, and then here comes David, and all of a sudden he's, he's popular, and and this person doesn't know that God was working with David too. So what we don't understand though is that th things in life happen for a reason. Stories play out for us so we can learn, grow, and be tested when we need to be tested and disciplined when we need to be disciplined. So we can take responsibility and understand and, and, and understand more about our purpose. And that is seeking the Lord and depending on the Lord at all times. And so in this case, look, listen to what David said. I'm going to reread it again because this is very good. But the king said, what do you and I have in common? You sons of Zer Zerai, if he is cursing because the Lord said to him, curse David, who can ask, why do you do this? So he's basically saying, so bad things happening to you, right? And you know, you may have, you may have played a role in it, or you may have done something. Are you going to ask, are you? Are you seriously going to question God? That's what he's in. In one way, he's that's uh, that's what I get from it. You may get a different way, or get different thought, or a different process, or the Holy Spirit may be giving you something, especially that communicates or it's relevant to your situation in your life. Um, but I see it as in, you know, he's humbling. He's he's like, who am I? He let him speak. He's speaking how he feels. He's speaking his truth, and there may be something to it there this there is a reason you know here he's already gotten a visit from nathan right the prophet telling him hey <laughs> you did wrong and it's going to show in your your you know in your family um because of the murder <laughs> and so david's kind of like yeah yeah you know, it might not be true or whatever, but it's criticism. It's, you know, and it's at him. And he's like, I may deserve this right now. You know, there's times where I slipped up as a human. He's taken, he's taken responsibility. Do we do that? Do you or I do that? Things to think about, right? What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. David then said to Abishai and all his officials, my son, who is of my own flesh, is trying to take my life. How much more than this Benjamite? Leave him alone. Let him curse, for the Lord has told him to. It may be that the Lord will see, him, um, see my distress and repay me with good for the cursing I am receiving today. So David and his men continued along the road with, while Shimei was going along the hillside opposite him, cursing as he went and throwing stones at him and showering him with dirt. The king and all the people with him arrived at their destination exhausted, and there he refreshed himself. So not only, okay, so we get one of those things like take the higher road, right? This is a prime example. <laughs> Turning the other cheek, you know, turning the turning that other cheek, uh, allowing for something to happen, for things to happen. David's showing, showing right here. When we get into those situations, there, the the Lord fights our battles for us, and this is what David is saying. The, David is literally saying, "I don't need to do anything if if he is justified." He will be able to continue to do it. If he is not justified, the Lord will see this and take um, and and take that into account for me. Take into the account that I'm being persecuted or that I'm being, yeah, I'm being attacked or being persecuted and such. And so he's giving even that, even someone who is criticizing him, taking action against him by throwing stones, he is allowing for it to happen because he is saying, hey, maybe this is meant to be for right now. This is what needs to happen. Um, we don't need to kill him. He's not, this person, you know, he's just, he's throwing stones, but he's not, he, he that sticks and stones may, you know, break my bones and stuff, <laughs> you know, but he's not, he's, he's, this person's angry. You know, 
and he's not he's not going out with a weapon that is going to immediately kill everybody you know and so think about that think about that tip for today <sighs> brings up another hot topic i don't know if i want to talk about it though because i don't know if this is i always say that when i don't feel but it just brought up something else to my mind another hot topic um I mean, I'll just say it, but I, I don't know where it's going to go with it. Guns. So, think about it. Um, how society treats things of that nature today. What the thought process is. How the community feels. How people feel and think about it. What their actions are about those things. All of this is uh, takes into play when it comes to this. And we're talking about past to present. And in order to relate and understand, sometimes we have to think about that. We can also um, take it to another level. Have you been in an argument in high school or whatever, and somebody has uh, wanted to fight or wanted to do something or started throwing stuff at you or books or what have you, has or family have have you gotten a fight with family the best thing to do is immediately give it to the lord because you never know people think that oh i give it to the lord i'm dead where is the faith where's the faith where's the faith you never never know we never know because we don't we don't live in the future we don't we don't we're not the Alpha and Omega. We have a living, we have a living God, and He knows. So we and we don't. So put our faith and trust in the Lord. There's all kinds of stuff uh, about. Ooh, this is some deep stuff, right? Second Samuel. <laughs> what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. The advice of Hush, Hushai in Ath. Ahithophel, Ahithophel. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the men of Israel came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel was with him. Then Hushai, the archite, David's friend, went to Absalom and said to him, Long live the king! Long live the king! <laughs> He's doing it up. Remember previously, just a quick pause, uh, this is one of those people that David said, um, they were, uh, what is his name? Hushai was talking to David. He's like, hey, and they had a conversation and I'm trying to remember how it went, but it was, was like, why don't you go and see what my son's doing and how things are going? Because maybe with you, you can be more of an influence because he knows you. And so Hushai is going to help. Um, he's going to He's putting on a show so he can get in good with Absalom, so he can help David by being someone on the inside. Let's continue to read. Absalom asked Hushai, Is this the love you show your friend? Why didn't you go with your friend? Hushai said to Absalom, No, the one chosen by the Lord, by these people, and by all the men of Israel, his I will be, and I will remain with him. He's rubbing it in, and he's getting it good. Furthermore, whom should I serve? Should I not serve the son just as I served your father? So I will serve you. Man, he's flattering Absalom. Remember, he's he's used, it's almost like he's using his flattery against him. You know, Absalom was flattering everybody else. So he's flattering Absalom because sometimes that works. Sometimes what somebody uses, you can use it right against them. <laughs> Have you ever ran into that? Think about it. Or has has something come up where you can't deal with the character and it's hard? Try using what their tactic against them. Think about it, and it's not necessarily in a bad way. You it, you can use it in 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 a good way. You can turn it around, um, and it be a blessing to both of you. Think about it. There's a lot here. Uh, so Absalom, okay, so a Absalom said to Ahithophel, give us your advice. What should we do? 
Ahithophel answered, Lie with your father's concubines, whom he left to take care of the palace. Then all Israel will hear that you have made yourself a stench in your father's nostrils, and the hands of everyone with you will be strengthened. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the roof, and he lay with his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Does anybody remember what the prophet Nathan said? Your sons will, your son will do something. You did, you did, you did um, your relation in secret um, because you know he slept with Bathsheba. He took her while his, while her husband was at war, and did everything in secret, right? And so the prophet, I think it was Nathan. Correct me if I'm wrong. Always, um, was like, hey, the Lord said your your family, your son, one of your sons, gonna do it in the daylight. And look what's happened. That's called prophecy, right? Let's continue to read. Um, now, in those days, the advice Ahithophel gave was like that of one who inquires of God. That was how both David and Absalom regarded all of Ahithophel's advice. So they're like, yeah, God told him to tell, to, for me to do this. <laughs> Let's think about this. Do we think this action and this thought product, process and pattern was from the Lord or something else <laughs> I'm going with something else and the Lord will allow for that something else though because the Lord is holy and just and he knows what sin is and he can still utilize he can still utilize uh, sin to glorify to turn around and glorify him it's amazing right oh it's because he's God <laughs> um past to present ooh uh. <laughs> uh. Does this happen? Something similar to it? Yes. Uh. <laughs> um. Okay, let's think about this. Do other people... Do other people... When they feel like they're getting their way, they kind of rub it into people's faces. Let me take it that way right they feel like they're like yes i'm successful i've done everything and i backstabbed you and i'm rubbing in your face give it to the lord let the lord fight your battles because we are going to see uh, maybe today or maybe in today's bible study it might be the next one what actually is going to happen what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind how does it make you feel and what does it make you think let's continue to read Ahithophel said to Absalom, I would choose 12,000 men and set out tonight in pursuit of David. I would attack him while he's weary and weak. I would strike him with terror and then all the people with, with him will flee. I would strike down only the king and bring all the people back to you. The death of the man you seek will mean the return of all. All the people will be unharmed. This plan seemed good to Absalom and to all the elders of Israel. Mm -mm -mm. And to all the elders of Israel, we see where they their loyalties lies to power and wealth. Quick pause. You know what the question? Past to present. <laughs> does that? Does some, does the, I know right? There's a lot in this room. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> does that stuff happen today? I'm going to go with yours. Yes. So we got to think about it. So when you, okay, so officials elected, whether they're elected or people in charge, um, or, you know, if you get into that role, keep the Lord with you. Keep the Lord with you at all times to help keep you focused because the Lord will help you help everyone else, right? Because <clears throat> he loves all of us. Not just a few, not just some. He loves every single person and every single person, even people who don't even believe him, believe him, believe in him. Up to their death, the Lord is always trying to reach out to, to them. Always. You never know. You, we don't know. The Lord is there because he loves us. 
So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. But Absalom said, summon all, or summon also Hushai the archite. So we can hear what he has to say. When Hushai came to him, Absalom said, Ahithophel was, has given this advice. Should we do what he says? If not, give us your opinion. Hushai replied to Absalom, the advice of Ahithophel has given has given is not good this time. You know your father and his men, they are fighters and as fierce as a wild bear robbed of her cubs. Besides, your father is an experienced fighter. He will not spend the night with the troops. Even now, he is hidden in a cave or some other place. If he should attack your troops first, whoever hears about it will say, there has been a slaughter among the troops who follow Absalom. Then even the bravest soldier whose heart is like the heart of a lion will melt with fear for all Israel knows that your father is a fighter and that those with him are brave. Interesting. Let's see, let's continue to read. So I advise you, let all Israel from Dan to Brzeba, as numerous as the sand of the seashore be gathered to you with you yourself leading them into battle. Then we will attack him wherever he may be found and we will Fall, uh, fall on him as dew settles on the ground. Neither he nor any of his men will be left alive. If he withdraws into a city, then all Israel will bring ropes to that city and we will drag it down to the valley until not even a piece of it can be found. Absalom and all the men of Israel said, the advice of Hushai, the archive, is better than that of Ahithophel. For the Lord had determined to frustrate the good advice of Ahithophel in order to bring disaster on Absalom. Think about it. So Ahithophel gave him accurate, true advice. But Hushai's there and he's like, he gave him something to give them den denial, to give them doubt. And it worked. Let's continue to read. Hushai told Zodak and Abiathar, the priest, Ahithophel has advised Absalom and the elders of Israel to do such and such, but I have advised them to do so and so. Now send a message immediately and tell David, do not spend the night at the fords in the desert, cross over without fail, or the king and all the people with him will be swallowed up. Jonathan and Ahimaaz were staying at in Rogel, a servant girl was to go and inform them, and they were to go and tell King David, for they could not risk being seen entering the city. But a young man saw them and told Absalom. So the two of them left quickly and went to the house of a man in Bahirim. He had a well in his courtyard, and they climbed down into it. His wife took a covering and spread it out over the opening of the well and scattered grain over it. No one knew anything about it. Um, so um, these two um, were well known that they were still following David. And so when the person told them, when Hushai told them what to tell David, someone did that was loyal to Absalom saw these two, Zodak and Abiathar. Um, and so they were went searching for him. You know, they saw him. They were like, oh, let's, you know, we got to stop them. They're in here. They may have found something that, you know, or let's capture him. And so um, they went to a place and they were able to hide in a well. Let's continue to read. When Absalom's men came to the woman at the house, they asked, where are Ahimaaz and Jonathan? Oh, I'm sorry. The two people were Ahimaaz and Jonathan. Sorry. Thank Yes. Please. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The woman answered them, they crossed over the brook. The men searched, but found no one. So they returned to Jerusalem. After the men had gone, the two climbed out of the well and went, uh, went to inform King David. They said to him, set out and cross the river at once. Ahithophel has advised such and such against you. So David and all the people with him set out and crossed the Jordan. By daybreak, no one was left who had not crossed the Jordan. 
When Ahithophel saw that his advice had not been followed, he saddled his donkey and set out for his house in his hometown. He put his house in order and then hanged himself. <laughs> so he died and was buried in his father's tomb. <laughs> oh, drama. This was a person of like high integrity, high pride. You know, he was he provides sound advice and then he was like, oh, so what let's think about it. Did he think he was being overthrown, overtaken in his in his um spot in in the court, basically? Uh, or was he that prideful? He was just like, They don't listen to me, they don't need me, I'm killing myself. My goodness. Very dramatic, right? But you never know. Does that have, think, does do people get that um, passionate about subjects? Absolutely. Like I said, even when it comes to taboo subjects or hot topics that pe uh, people discuss, uh, people don't like talking about those when it comes to community, when it comes to their churches or or their cynic, whatever they, you know, whatever place of worship they go to. And that's not necessarily something that is what I read in the Bible. It's always good to bring up subjects because where there are one or, or where there are two or more, there I am. So you're you're asking, you're asking the Holy Spirit, you're asking the Lord, you're, you're talking and discussing with other people and other people and the Lord can utilize others to um, voice what he wants to tell you or I, you know. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think? There's a lot here. So I'm going to try to continue as quickly as possible, <laughs> as quick quickly, slowly, quickly as possible. <laughs> Let's continue to read. Um, so, David went to Mahanim and Absalom crossed the Jordan with all the men of Israel. Absalom had appointed Amasa over the army in place of Joab. Amasa was the son of a man named Jether, an Israelite, who had married Abigail, the daughter of Nahash and sister of Zerai, the mother of Joab. The Israelites and Absalom camped in the land of Gil Gilead. When David came to Mahanim, Shobi, son of Nahash, from Rabbah of the Ammonites, and Mekir, son of Emil, from Lodabir, and Barzilia, the Gileadite, from Rogalim, brought bedding and bowls and articles of pottery. They also brought wheat and barley, flour and roasted grain, beans and lentils, honey and curds, sheep and cheese from cow's milk for David and his people to eat. For they said, the people have to, the people have become hungry and tired and thirsty in the desert. That was very nice of them. They brought them, they didn't just bring leftovers or little things. They brought a lot. They brought all this um, for food and um, that, that was wonderful. That was a blessing right there. <clears throat> Because they knew. They knew what was going on. And the Lord provides, right? Um, he provides for us. See? Things are going bad. But for some odd reason, things show up, right? Stuff starts changing or stuff. Um, things, people show up. Things happen. You start, it's almost like the tide turns, right? And that's bringing past to present. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Absalom's death. There you go. David mustered the men who were with him and appointed over them commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. David sent the troops out a third under the command of Joab, a third under Joab's brother Abishai, son of Zerai, and a third under it it Itai the Gittite. The king told the troops, I myself will surely march out with you. But the men said, you must not go out. If we are forced to flee, they won't care about us. Even if half of us die, they won't care. But you are worth 10,000 of us. It would be better now for you to give us support from the city. The king answered, I will do whatever seems best to you. Smart. He didn't want to argue. He didn't want to have any issues. So he just was like, you know, 
let, let's, let me go ahead and do that. It's not that he didn't want to go out. Remember, King, King David had been in many battles. Remember the same song, uh, Saul, his thousands, David, his tens of thousands or something like that. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, absolutely. So it wasn't, it wasn't fear. It was just kind of at a place where he was calm and he was at peace. Lord, I feel like the Lord had given peace to make this decision and be okay with it. Let's continue to read. So the king stood beside the gate while all the men marched out in units of hundreds and of thousands. The king commanded Joab, Abishai, and Atai, be, be gentle with the young man, Absalom, for my sake. He loved his child, right? And all the troops heard the king giving orders concerning Absalom to each of the commanders. The army marched into the field to fight Israel and, to, and the battle took place in the forest of Ephraim. There, the army of Israel was defeated by David's men, and the casualties that day were great, 20,000 men. The battle spread out over the whole countryside, and the forest claimed more lives that day than the sword. I'm going to read this part again. The battle spread out over the whole countryside, and the forest <laughs> claimed more lives that day than the sword. Remember I talked about the Lord, we talked about the Lord fighting our battles? It's amazing. <laughs> the fourth, people running into trees, people falling off ledges, people falling into pits, um, getting hit by rocks or what have you, <coughs> running into rocks or... <laughs> the Lord does what he does. <laughs> Now, let's continue to read. Now, Absalom happened to meet David's men. He was riding his mule, and as the mule went under the thick branches of a large oak, a large oak. This is. I'm sorry. I just, I'm trying. I gotta. I'll try to keep a straight face. Ab. Okay. So, as the mule went under the thick branches of a large oak, Absalom's head got caught in the tree. He was left hanging in mid air while the mule he was riding kept on going. He's hanging by his hair. <sighs> Here he is, very arrogant, very pompous, wanting to kill his father. He's riding a mule, he's going slow, and his, his hair gets caught on a, on a tree branch, and he is stuck. And, here, and you can, I could just, I could just see the mule just <laughs> and just keep going and he's like <laughs> you know as the mule I mean he's hanging <sighs> consequences right was Absalom following what the Lord was telling him to do or what he wanted to do what he as an Absalom wanted to do um, let's continue to read when one of the men saw this, he told Joab, I just saw Absalom hanging in an oak tree. <laughs> Joab said to the man who had told him this, What? You saw him? Why didn't you strike him to the ground right there? Then I would have had to give you ten shekels of silver in a warrior's belt. But the man replied, Even if a thousand shekels were weighed out into my hands, I would not lift my hand against the king's son. And our hearing... The king commanded you and Abishai and Aitai, protect the man, protect the young man Absalom for my for my sake. And if I had put my life in jeopardy and nothing is hidden from the king, you would have kept your distance from me. Joab said, I'm not going to wait like this for you. So he took three javelins in his hand and plunged them into Abishai's heart while Absalom was still alive in the oak tree. And ten of Joab's arm bearers surrounded Absalom, struck him, and killed him. So did Joab listen to David? I think Joab's Joab's is like a man of like he what some would say like as a man of war. He's a warrior. He wants victory. He sees a defeat. He wants to be victorious. He wants to claim that victory, and here he's doing it, even if it's against what King D, what 
his king told him to do. And he's okay with it. Like, full on knowledge. <clears throat> um, bringing past to present. Do people not follow orders? Absolutely. It happens all the time. Sometimes it's for good, good, you know, good because that order is really bad. It's against the law or it's against, it's going to harm people, etc. But sometimes it's not so good. Sometimes it's because someone else, their pride or their prejudice or whatever it may be, is, is uh, ruling them. And so they take action or they do what they weren't told to do. That happens in families. That happens with children too, right? Think about it. There's all kinds of things to think about here. What kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? I hear from all the time parents talking about, oh, my child's being disrespectful. Or uh, a kid talking about their parent. Oh, my parent's really rude or and disrespectful. Goes both ways. Think about it. Let's continue to read. Uh, then Joab sounded the trumpet and the troops stopped pursuing Israel for Joab halted, halted them. They took Absalom, threw him into a big pit in the forest and piled up a large heap of rocks over him. Meanwhile, all the Israelites fled uh, to their homes. During his lifetime, Absalom had taken a pillar and erected it in the king's valley as a monument to himself. For he thought, I have no son to carry on the memory of my name. He named the pillar after himself. And it is called Absalom's Monument to this day. Oh, man. Absalom just did that. And it's almost like he, he, he was glorifying himself, right? He made a monument to himself. Um, do people do that today? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And so we have a lot to look at here. What kind of thoughts and feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? I'm going to do a quick pause for just a second for technical difficulties. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, so, again, um, Absalom just died. Job killed him. And that's where we left off. And do, like I mentioned, do people follow orders to this day? Not all the time. Um, and that includes our walk with the Lord. The Lord tells us what to do. Do we are we following what He tells us to do, <clears throat> or do we we think there's a better way, or we think there's a d another way? Think about it. That's almost like question. That's basically like questioning the Lord. Like God knows everything. So if He's telling you, if He's telling you or I or so to do something right we we need to follow through we'll see other examples in the bible where people were, were like i'm not gonna do that lord <laughs> we'll see what happens when when people actually do try try that <laughs> and the lord still is like i'm gonna utilize you <laughs> one way or another <laughs> let's continue to read david mourns <clears throat> Now Ahimaaz, son of Zodak, said, Let me run and take the news to the king that the Lord has delivered him from the hand of his enemies. You are not the one to take the news today, Job told him. You may take the news another time, but you must not do so today, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to a Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. The Cushite bowed down before Joab and ran off. Ahimaaz, son of Zodak, again said to Joab, Come, what may, please let me run behind the Cushite. But Joab replied, My son, why do you want to go? You don't have any news that will bring you a reward. He said, Come, what may, I want to run. So Joab said, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain, plain and outran the Cushite. While David was sitting between the inner and outer gates, the watchman went up to the roof of the gateway by the wall. As he looked out, he saw a man running alone. The watchman called out to the king and reported it. The king said, If he is alone, he must have good news. And the man came closer and closer. 
Then the watchman saw another man running, and he called down to the gatekeeper, Look, another man running alone. The king said, He must be bringing good news too. The watchman said, It seems to me that the first one runs like Ahima, son of Zodak. He's a good man, the king said. He comes with good news. Then Ahima is called out to the king as all is well. He bowed down before the king with his face to the ground and said, Praise be to the Lord your God. He has delivered up the men, the men who lifted their hands against my lord the king. The king asked, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahima has answered, I just saw or I saw a great confusion just as Joab was about to send the king's servant and me, your servant, but I don't know what it was. The king said, Stand aside and wait here. So he stepped aside and stood there. <clears throat> then the Cushite arrived and said, My lord the king, hear the good news. The Lord has delivered you today from all who rose up against you. The king asked the Cushite, Is there is the young man Absalom safe? The Cushite replied, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to harm you be like that young man. Ooh. -oh. The king was shaken. He went up to the room over the gateway and wept. As he went, he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you. Oh, Absalom, my son, my son. So even though his son wanted to kill him, he still loved his son. It was, you know, when they say children are a blessing, he felt compassion. He felt love for his son. He even even though Absalom was sinning, he still he still loved him. There's all kinds of stuff to think about on this, right? Look at us. We sin. Guess what? Jesus still loves us. He still cares for us and he still works with us and for us. He wants to be with us. He doesn't want us to sin. Of course not. That's why the Lord sent his son to be to free us from sin. But he doesn't want us to sin. So having that walk with the Lord, having a strong walk with the Lord helps prevent that those times where we just like those temptations helps prevent those sins. What kind of thoughts and feelings come to your mind if, if you're a parent? Or if you if you feel strongly about another person? What kind of thoughts and feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Joab was told the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom and for the whole army. The victory that day <clears throat> was turned into mourning because on that day, the troops heard it said the king is grieving for his son. The men stole into the city that day as men steal in who are ashamed when they flee from battle. The king covered his face and cried out, cried aloud. Oh, my son, Absalom, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Joab went into the house to the king and said, Today you have humiliated all your men. You have just saved your uh, who have just saved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and concubines. You love those who hate you and hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that the commanders and their men mean nothing to you. I say that you would be pleased if Absalom were alive today and all of us were dead. Now go out and encourage your men. I swear by the Lord that if you don't go out. Not a man will be left with you by nightfall. This will be worse for you than all the calamities that you that have come upon you from your youth till now. <clears throat> so the king got up and took his seat in the gateway. When the men were told the king is sitting in the gateway, they all came before him. So Job was kind of telling them. I kind of feel like he was telling them correctly at this time that he needed to be more of a representative of the people and how the people were being split up because of his son. And now he's time for him to bring the people back together. So what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel? And what does it make you think?
let's continue to read. David returns to Jerusalem. Meanwhile, the Israelites had fled to their homes throughout the tribes of Israel. The people were all arguing with each other, saying, The king delivered us from the hand of our enemies. He is the one who rescued us from the hand of the Philistines. But now he has fled the country because of Absalom. And Absalom, who, whom we anointed, the ruler, uh, we anointed to rule over us, has died in battle. So why do you say nothing about bringing the king back? King David sent this message to Zodak and Abiathar, the priest. Ask the elders of Judah, why should you be uh, the last to bring the king back to his palace, since what is being said throughout Israel has reached the king at his quarters? You are my brothers, my own flesh and blood, so why should you be the last to bring back the king? And say to Am Amasa, are you not my own flesh and blood? Are you not... Um, or I'm sorry, uh, may God deal with me, be it ever so, ever so severely, if from now on you are not the commander of my army in place of Joab. He went over the hearts of all the men of Judah as though they were one man. They sent word to the king, return you and all your men. Then the king returned and went as far as the Jordan. Now the men of Judah had come to Gilgal to go out and meet the king and bring him across the Jordan. Shemai, son of Gera the Benjamite from Baharim, hurried down with the men of Judah to meet King David. With him were a thousand Benjamites, along with Ziba, the steward of Saul's household, and his fifteen sons and twenty servants. They rushed to the Jordan, where the king was. They crossed at the ford to take the king's household over and to do whatever he wished. When Shemai, son of Gera, crossed the Jordan, he fell prostrate before the king and said to him, My lord, not hold my may may my lord not hold me guilty. Do not remember how your servant did wrong on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind, for I, your servant, know that I have sinned, but today I have come here as the first of the whole house of Joseph to come down and meet my lord the king. Then Abishai, son of Zerai, said, Shouldn't Shemai be put to death for this? He cursed the Lord's anointed. So remember, this was the person that was originally um, cursing David because um, he was related to Saul's family. And, he, and now he's, he's apologizing because he's saying, Hey, you know, you don't... Um, went against your son and um, it was wrong and what he was doing it was splitting Israel apart and now you're putting everything back together you're doing what the people wanted so he's he's apologizing <clears throat> see people can change right <laughs> uh, then Abishai Son of Zerai said, Shouldn't Shemai be put to death for this? He cursed the Lord's anointed. David replied, What do you and I have in common? You're, you sons of Zerai, this day you have become my advisors, uh, or at my ad adversaries. Should anyone be put to death in Israel today? Do I not know that today I am king over Israel? So the king said to Shemai, You shall not die. And the king promised him an oath, on oath. Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, also went down to meet the king. He had not taken care of his feet or trimmed his mustache or washed his clothes from the day the king left until the day he returned safely. When he came from Jerusalem to meet the king, the king asked him, Why didn't you go with me, Mephibosheth? He said, My lord, the king, since I, your servant, am a lame, I said, I will have my donkey saddled and will ride on it so I can go with the king. But Ziba, my servant, betrayed me, he, and he has slandered your servant to my lord, the king. My lord, the king, is like an angel of God. So do whatever pleases you. All my grandfather's descendants deserve nothing but death from my lord, the king. But you gave your servant a place among those who eat at your table. So what right do I have to make any more appeals to the king? So he's telling, telling him what really happened. That servant betrayed it, betrayed Mephibosheth. The king said to him, Why say more? I order you and Ziba to divide the fields. Mephibosheth said to the king, Let him take everything, now that my lord the king has arrived home safely. Barzillai the Giladite also came down from 
Rogalim the to cross the Jordan with the king and to send him on his way from there. Now, Barzil Barzillai was a very old man, 80 years old of age. He had provided for the king during his stay in Menahem, for he was very wealthy for he was a very wealthy man. The king said to Barzillia, cross over with me and stay with me in Jerusalem and I will provide for you. But Barzillia answered the king, how many more years will I have that I should go up to Jerusalem with the king? I am now 80 years old. Can I tell the difference between what is good and what is not? Can your servant taste what he eats and drinks? Can I still hear the voices of men and women singers? Why should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant will cross over the Jordan with the king for a short distance, but why should the king be why should the king reward me in this in this way? Let your servant return that I may die in my own town near the tomb of my father and mother. But here is your servant uh, Kimham. Let him cross over with my lord the king. Do for him whatever pleases you. The king said, "King Kim Ham shall cross over with me, and I will do for him whatever pleases you, and anything you desire from me, I will do for you. So all the people crossed the Jordan, and then the king crossed over. The king kissed Brasilia and uh, gave him his blessing, and Brasilia returned to his home. When the king crossed over, the, over to Gilgal, Kim Ham crossed with him. All the troops of Judah and half the troops of Israel had taken the king over. Soon all the men of Israel were coming to the king, saying to him, Why did our brothers, the men of Judah, steal the king away and bring him and his household across the Jordan together with all his men? All the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, We did this because the king is closely related to us. Why are you angry about it? You have eaten, or have you eaten any of the king's provisions? Have we taken anything for ourselves? Then the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, We have ten shares in the king, and besides, we have a greater claim on David than you have. So why do you treat us with contempt? We're, were we not the first to speak of bringing back our king? But the men of Judah responded even more harshly than the men of Israel. So this is a pro, like a, what was it, prologue or pro? This is like, basically telling us what's getting ready, what's going to happen soon um, in, the, in the future, that there's going to be a, a split in the kingdom between Judah and Israel. Um, and so right now, basically, everything's coming back together, and uh, David's bringing every, everyone back together, and he's in better spirits. He's still up, he, he may have still been upset about his son, but now he's doing what he needs to do. And, and following what the Lord is telling, guiding him to do. And so he's um, pulling the people back together. However, there is a little bit of an issue, but, and this is going to be expanded upon over and over again um, as we continue to read on uh, about how there's going to be a split eventually in the kingdom. Um, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's continue to read. Sheba rebels against David. Now a troublemaker named Sheba, son of Beri, a Benjamite, happened to be there. He sounded the trumpet and shouted, We have no share in David, no part in Jesse's son, every man to his tent, O Israel. So all the men of Israel deserted David to follow Sheba, son of uh, Bichri. But the men of Judah stayed by their king all the way from the Jordan to Jerusalem. When David returned to his palace in Jerusalem, he took the ten concubines he had left to take care of the palace and put them in a house under guard. He provided for them, but did not lie with them. They were kept in co confinement till the day of their death, living as widows. It's because, remember, Absalom... Hmm. Uh -uh -uh. Let's continue to read. Uh, then the king said to Amasa, summon the men of Judah to come to me within three days and be here yourself. But when Amasa went to summon Judah, he took longer than the time the king had set for him. David said to Abishai, now Sheba, son of uh, Bichri, will do us more harm than Absalom did. Take your master's men and pursue him, or he will find fortified cities and escape from us. So Joab's men and the Kerathites and Pelathites 
and all the mighty warriors went out under the command of Abishai. They marched out from Jerusalem to pursue Sheba, son of Bichri. While they were at the great rock in Gibeon, Amasa came to meet them. Joab was wearing his military tunic and strapped over it at his waist was a belt with a dagger in, his, in its sheath. As he stepped forward, it dropped out of its sheath. Joab said to Amasa, How are you, my brother? Then Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. Amasa was, Amasa was not on his guard against the dagger in Joab's hand, and Joab plunged in, it into his belly, and his intestines spilled out on the ground. Without being stabbed again, Amasa died. Then Joab and his brother Abishai pursued Sheba, son of Bikri. One of jo so, so jo Abishai literally just murdered another person. Oh, I'm sorry, Joab just murdered another person. That's uh, Masa. Mm -mm -mm. Drama. One of jo uh, let's continue to read. One of Job's men stood beside Amasa and said, "Whoever favors Joab and whoever is for David, let him follow Joab." Amasa lay wallowing in his blood in the middle of the road, and the men saw that all the troops came to a halt there. When he realized that everyone who came up to Amasa stopped, he dragged him from the road into a field and threw a garment over him. After Amasa had been removed from the road, all the men went on with Job to pursue Sheba, son of Bikri. Sheba passed through all the tribes of Israel to Abel, Beth, Makkah, and through the entire region of the Berites, who gathered together and followed him. All the troops with Joab came and besieged Sheba in Abel, Beth, Makkah. They built a siege ramp up to the city and it stood against the outer fortifications. While they were battering the wall to bring it down, a wise woman called from the city, listen, listen, tell Joab to come here so I can speak to him. He went toward her and she asked, are you Joab? I am, he answered. She said, listen to what your servant has to say. Now this part is interesting, okay? And keep note about this because this is very important. It's gonna come in Future, many future Bible studies, I believe. I believe this portion is. So think, um, because it's, it plays a key role. So let's continue to read. Um, she said, listen to what your servant has to say. I'm listening, he said. She continued, long ago, they used to say, get your answer at Abel, and that settled it. We are the peaceful and faithful in Israel. You are trying to destroy a city that is a mother in Israel. Why do you want to swallow up the Lord's inheritance? Far be it from me, Job replied, far be it from me to swallow up or destroy. That is not the case. A man named Sheba, son of Bichri, from the hill country of Ephraim, has lifted up his hand against the king, against David. Hand over this one man, and I'll withdraw from the city. The woman said to Job, his head will be thrown to you from the wall. Listen to what she just said. Listen, to we are peaceful and, faith, and faithful in Israel. And I believe at this time she's talking about these people really follow the Lord. These people were, were very much of faith. Um, I'm not, I, I can't remember in other translations how it plays out. Um, if you, what, you know, if this is incorrect, please make corrections and list them in the comments. Um, so let's continue to read. Um, then the woman went to all the people with her wise advice, and they cut off the head of Sheba, son of Bikri, and threw it to Job. So he sounded the trumpet, and his men dispersed from the city, each returning to his home, and Job went back to the king in Jerusalem. Job was over Israel's entire army. Benai, son of Jeho Jehoadi, Jeho Jehoiada, was over the Kerithites and Pelethites. Adonarim was in charge of forced labor. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was recorder. Shiva was secretary. Zodak and Abiathar were priests. And Ira the Jerite was David's priest. Wow. So... Another person who was trying to cause issues uh, went to a area, a city that they were um, truth, you know, I, I believe they were following what the Lord's guidance and this and 
they knew who Joab was, and they were like, why are you attacking this city? Why, you know, why are you attacking us? We're your fellows, and we, 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 are, we hold the faith, right? We help hold the faith together. We help hold the people together. Job told them, and she's like, okay, let us handle this. They sure did. They threw that head right over the wall and said, here you go. Have a good day. <laughs> Sad and dramatic at the same time. Lots. And you never know. Sometimes you don't have to. You don't have to rush into things and do things because the Lord fights our battles. The Lord prepares us and uh, communication is key. Communication and, and love is key. Let's do a quick review. Or what kind of, before we do, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think? Let's do a quick review. David and Ziba. So David had fled from Absalom. And so he was now um, with Ziba. And Ziba uh, was the steward of Mephibosheth. And so Ziba ends up kind of lying, maybe lying um, to David about the situation in Jerusalem. And and uh, we talked about a lot today. We talked about a lot. We talked about um, how there could be arguments, even including on people of faith. And, th and that's okay. We just take a moment. And we put the Lord right back into it. We refocus in our conversations and continue with the conversations. The advice of Hushai and Ahithophel. Remember, Hushai um, was... Uh, a friend of David, and he was uh, sent to his uh, his son Absalom to to give counsel, to provide counsel, and he gave counsel against Ahithophel, and Ahithophel killed himself because of it, because they went with Hushai's advice. And that things can happen. Absalom's death. Absalom. He didn't. He, he, there was no fighting, no nothing. He, he got stuck in a tree by his hair, and then Job did him in. And then David mourned. He mourned so much that it made his own troops and his own people feel bad. You know, feel bad for what? I mean, they they were doing something to protect him, and now they're like, this person's ungrateful, right? And so Job had to go and tell him. Smack him around a little bit <laughs> and tell him, get, on, get out there and, and be king to these people. And so he did. And so, after, you know, he did some mourning, but he, he went out there and did his king duties. Dave returns to Jerusalem and he brought everybody back together. And then we have yet another rebellion going on by Sheba. But he went to the wrong place. He went to the wrong place. And those people got together and threw his head over the wall because they didn't want to they didn't want to have the drama they didn't have war where they were so there's a lot here there's a lot to think about um what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind how does it make you feel and what does it make you think thank you once again for joining in another lamp bible study these bible studies come out every tuesday and thursdays there's uh highlights throughout the week as well as flashlights typically on Fridays. I hope and pray that we continue to seek the Lord's wisdom together in his holy word and um, please continue to pray for me. I will always continue to pray for you. Uh, I will always try to bring up examples and things and uh, of whatever nature because it's it's okay. It's called for. It's it's something that we can we can discuss and we can talk about and have thoughts and feelings and our search for the Lord's wisdom and guidance. So um, that I think that does it for today. Uh, and thank you very much for joining me wherever you are. Have a blessed morning, a blessed day, a blessed e afternoon, a blessed evening, a blessed night. God bless.